I want to tell you about a place in Colombia that is simply amazing. It's the kind of place that makes me glad to be traveling. The Pacific coast is raw, authentic, and it's off the usual trail. It's a place brimming with wild nature where you can see humpback whales jumping out of the water, where you can get utterly lost in the jungles. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Colombia's Pacific coast is truly remote. It has just a couple of towns by the coast that cannot be reached by land. You could go on a boat ride that only goes once a week, but the most practical way to get there is by propeller plane. The flight is a bit of an attraction in itself, and I felt excited just looking out the window the whole way through. You depart from Medellin, and you fly over coffee farmlands, and then seemingly infinite jungle without any roads, until finally you emerge through the clouds at the isolated coastal town of Bahia Salan. Not that many people visit this part of Colombia, and I think the reason is that it rains a lot. This is not where you go for your sunny beach holiday. Someone told me that actually it is one of the rainiest places on earth. And I thought they meant that in a metaphorical sense, but then I actually looked it up and is one of the top 20 wettest places on the planet. I was on my way to the village of El Valle to a hostel that had been recommended to me by someone who'd lived in Colombia for a while and had spent some time on the coast here. When I checked into my hostel, I said, this German guy sent me, and they said, ah, so you met Jonah. <laughs> so it's kind of cool to go somewhere purely on a personal recommendation. Immediately the next day, I went on a boat trip to the nearby national park which is where I first realized how many animals and birds and fishes and everything are here. It's kind of incredible. I saw rays in the waters. There were parrots flying around. There were monkeys, sea turtles, so much life. Utria National Park is quite a special place. There's basically animals everywhere. Uh, there was like a swordfish, I think, jumping out of the water next to our boat. There are whales everywhere. You don't even have to go out into the open ocean to see whales here. They're just like hanging out uh, in every bay and then along the coastline. Um, there's parrots, like some eagles showed up, monkeys showed up on this beach where we were staying at. Uh, truly a special place. The whale watching is really quite extraordinary. I wasn't even on a whale watching trip and I saw more whales than I've ever seen in my entire life. I've been on whale watching tours before in other places in the world, for example in the Azores and to be honest it can be quite boring where you're on a boat for three hours hoping to see a whale and you're kind of losing hope that you will see one and then suddenly you see one whale. It's not like that here. After 50 minutes, you will probably see your first whale. They are everywhere. You can even see them breaching from the beach. Once back in town, when we got off our boat, we were lucky because someone came up to us and said, hey, we're about to release some turtles. Do you want to see it? There are these local volunteers in town that every night they grab any eggs that have been left by the sea turtles they keep them safe, away from dogs or people or birds that may harm them and they allow them to hatch and then every day they also go to the ocean to release the baby turtles. And they do this no matter if there's tourists there to see it day in, day out, off season or peak season, doesn't matter. These people are doing this every day which is really quite beautiful. So given how remote this place was, one thing I really wanted to do was to go on a hike into the jungles. But there aren't really any marked trails around here. In fact, the few paths that are there are barely visible. So you need a local guide to help you out. Guide is literally trying to hack a path through the jungle.
this local guide gave two options either you can go inland or we'll go by the coast we chose to go by the coast which actually uh, wasn't the best option because it was high tide which he didn't mention to us the high tide really sucked we had to climb over the rocks there were waves crashing into me there was driftwood hitting my leg so this was definitely pretty wild the hike continued through the jungle we were now going inland and at no point was there any kind of viewing point or could you tell where actually you were? But then you look up at the canopy and you just listen to the sounds of the jungle and you remember you're in an extraordinary place. Our guide did a great job of showing us different things such as how you can get water from these mini coconuts. Mm. There were a lot of interesting spiders, but for the most part, we were just walking. So we're just hiking and hiking and hiking. The trails were barely visible. And I started to think that maybe we were going in circles. This hike was taking hours and hours. We were supposedly always 20 minutes from our goal, but the 20 minutes would pass and then they would turn into another hour. I honestly started to get a bit loopy. I mean, all the jungle just looked the same. Was that the same poison dart frog we saw an hour ago? Wait, is that the same tree we passed earlier? It just seemed to be endless. Until finally, I heard this clattering of a waterfall and that was it, finally, finally. The hike was over. After six hours of walking through featureless, endless jungle, we'd made it to the waterfall. Now, whether this waterfall was worth the hike is debatable, but I was so relieved to be back out into the open and to see the ocean once again, where our boat would take us back to Baya Solano. On my last day, I went on another whale watching tour. And on the way there, we saw this sea turtle, which seemed a bit sad at first. Like, why is this sea turtle tied up on a rope? Actually, this was someone who was trying to rehabilitate this sea turtle and was trying to test if it was ready to be released. And it turned out it was ready to swim, but not able to dive yet. So this particular turtle had to go back to the rescue center for a little bit longer. Two marine biologists who are from Medellin, they live in Bayo Solana for part of the year and they identified the whales, they, they tagged them in a scientific database, but for part of the time they also do ecotourism experiences. Now they're the first people who are doing ecotourism here and I really respect how passionate they are about the subject matter. They can teach you a lot about these whales and they even have devices that allow you to listen to their song underwater. It was very windy, it had rained as well, but apparently that is a good thing because during this kind of weather the whales are known to be a bit more playful, so there was a chance of seeing them jump. And eventually one of them did. And what an amazing spectacle that was. Seeing a humpback whale breaching so close to me was absolutely the perfect end note of my stay in Baya Solano. We had some lunch and we went tubing and had a great day despite the rain that is just really common in this part of Colombia. I can honestly say that the Pacific Coast is my favorite place in Colombia. It is just so wild and filled with adventure. I wasn't always shooting videos, so what I haven't shown you is that it's also just wonderful to relax at the beach. The town is really friendly and peaceful. And if you want to do everything, I think spending four or five nights is well worth it. The best time of year is from July to November because that is when the whales are visiting. 
the accommodation around here is somewhat basic and there isn't a huge amount of tourism but it is fairly easy to travel there and if you want to know exactly how be sure to check the link in the description to my complete travel guide to Baia Solano and the area known as Shoko. If you've enjoyed this video please give it a like or subscribe as that will motivate me to do more videos. See you next time.